Welcome to another video here at Back to Classics and today we're going to discuss the uh, 1974 750 Super Sport green frame restoration, the Corfu uh, bike that we discussed earlier. So this will be part two in this series. And before we go into uh, details about uh, this, this bike and how we're going to restore it, uh, we'd like to uh, emphasize that we have a uh, website full of uh, information with all the parts, etc., uh, all the documentation that you might need. So be sure to check that out and of course like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's dive into the Corfu Green Frame. The first job uh, on the engine rebuild will be the uh, crankshaft and that is of course something that, is, uh, that sets the Supersport apart from its uh, uh, sister 750s, the GT and Sport. And especially that is seen with the, uh, with the Conrods. Now this uh, particular bike didn't have the correct Conrods fitted to the, uh, to the engine and that is something that we're going to correct in this instance. So we were able to find a set of Conrods, uh, original Conrods, these are machined. Uh, and beautifully made, something that really set this bike apart, especially in 1974, you have to remember. This is something that, is, uh, that was really special back in the day. Machined conrods uh, with these strengthening ribs here, uh, beautifully made. So we were able to find a set of those, but of course uh, the, uh, the fitment on the, on, the, on the bearing, that is something that is uh, really, really uh, within a very small tolerance, because uh, we're, we're talking about thousands of millimeters here, that, this, uh, that the range of the clearance must be. So uh, we got this, uh, this pin, newly made, newly ground, uh, to a correct size, of course new uh, bearing rollers and the original cages, uh, but then of course we had to make sure that the uh, big end diameter was also within the uh, specifications that we wanted. And that is why we uh, fitted this, uh, this ring that is a bearing uh, steel ring that is uh, crimp fitted in there and then uh, honed to size to the exact specifications, again within a thousandth of a millimeter. So we're um, absolutely uh, uh, happy with how it is set up right now. It is within our uh, tolerance and uh, we'll be sure that uh, the that crankshaft will be 100% uh, okay. Uh, so, and the, of course the uh, small end was done as well. So you can see here how the gudgeon pin fits in there beautifully and that is also good to go. So this is now uh, going to be put together and then uh, we uh, will align that cr crankshaft and make sure that it is uh, ready to fit the engine cases. Now the cases have been uh, just cleaned uh, in this instance we chose not to uh, uh, get it blasted because they are pretty clean, it's, it's, it looks beautiful, so no need to, uh, to go over that. Uh, we were able to find a set of original uh, new old stock uh, main bearings. There are replacement new bearings you can, you can get, but these have uh, uh, a different number of uh, balls in there. So this is the original, um, the original ones you cannot get anymore, but we are lucky to have this one set of uh, original main bearings for the crankshaft and then on uh, this side, on the left side uh, of the crank uh, cases, we found that the, uh, the old bearing uh, had been uh, running inside the, the bearing bush and that's why we're going to replace that uh, bearing sleeve bush, so to speak, as well in this side of the crankshaft, uh, sorry, crankcase. So that is um, the first jobs to prepare the, uh, the cases, to prepare the uh, the crankshaft and then we're going to move our attention to, uh, to the gearbox etc and make sure that the uh, engine is coming together well. So let's dive into the crankshaft first. So first the uh, crank pin needs to be pressed in one crankshaft wet in order to uh, start the rebuild after which we can fit the conrods on the new bearings uh, we discussed the preparation that goes into uh, into these before we can actually fit it, but that is the way it is done with a thrust washer on either side, and then we can move to the press again to put the other crankshaft web in place, making sure it is all properly aligned as we go along, but also after it is put together. 
making sure that it is aligned properly and that is done using this special jig that we use to measure the alignment. And what we're looking for are the high spots and the low spots, marking these so we get an idea of how the crankshaft should be moved or how the web should be moved relative to each other in order to get it aligned properly. And that is, of course is done with a heavy copper hammer and some blows in the right place. And here you can see the end result of the finished crankshaft. Good progress made so far on the 750 Supersport engine. Uh, you saw us rebuilding the crankshaft that has now been uh, fitted to the cases along with the gearbox and the kickstart shaft, of course. So the cases have now been closed. Beautiful conrods here sticking out. And the case is all prepared. And now for one of the main events on the 750 round case rebuild is this distribution system comprised of many gears, bevel gears, that all need to be set up and shimmed correctly for it to turn in the correct way. So uh, that's a whole package of shims and bearings and bushes that we're now going to fit together starting with the center bevel gear. So that whole job was to get this whole setup at the correct height in reference to the uh, gear that slides over the crankshaft. So this is now all set up and of course tested with all the rest of the gears in place. And now moving further with the horizontal and vertical distribution for the pedal drives.
So that makes the distribution for this engine now complete. As you can see, we have the front, rear and center bevel all set up with the uh, gear from the crankshaft there in place as well. And it is all lining up. Meanwhile, also the oil pump has been fitted together with the driving gear. And uh, as you can see here, we have no backlash as we should not have and it runs smoothly. Let's see if we can get it, that on camera as well. Next job on this engine rebuild, cylinders and pistons. And as you can see, these are all prepared, original Mondial pistons, 80.0 nominal size. So that's the first fitment from the factory. And we have lightly honed the, uh, the cylinder bore, both vertical and horizontal. And there are a set of new piston rings there, together with gudgeon pins that you saw before when we uh, prepared the crankshaft. So this is now time to come together. So time to move our attention to the cylinder heads. And uh, again here we have prepared massively with brand new valve seats. As you can see in here, newly machined. Takes a lot of work, but it's worth the effort. If you look at the end result and also on both cylinder heads we replaced the uh, valve guide on the exhaust side which had a little bit too much clearance on the uh, on the valve stem so both heads are prepared and here you can see the inner parts all laid out for the two cylinder heads that are going to be assembled And of course, one of the features of the 1974 Supersport were these, and, and later Supersports as well, but these were polished rockers, both on the uh, opening and closing rockers. Highly polished steel, as you can see here. Beautiful items. So, that's all coming together. So that's part one of the cylinder head rebuild. Camshaft is in place and the gears have been shimmed so they are properly, properly aligned now and that is the way we like it same for the horizontal cylinder so we can now move on to fitting the valves and the rockers rockers are in place and are all shimmed we've done a video before on the valve clearance adjustment so we can link uh, to that if you want to know more about how these, uh, these valves should be set for clearance. Of course, quite a complicated job. As you see, this is a Desmo system with the opening and closing rocker. They both need to, be, both need to have the proper clearance. So that is all done. You see here the exhaust side. I can promise you the inlet side has been done as well. As well as the, uh, the horizontal cylinder, you cylinder head you see here all done so these are now good to go on the engine so now the clutch and flywheel primary drive all in place just waiting for the clutch cover to be fitted and on the other side we have the alternator cover and gear selector cover to complete this side of the engine so nearly done. So as you can see, engine is now completely finished. Uh, we have touched everything in this uh, engine rebuild process from the crankshaft up to the cylinder heads. Everything is now 100% original and uh, uh, the way it was uh, fitted together in the factory in 1974. So that wraps up this engine rebuild for this project, uh, the uh, 74 Supersport Corfu 
uh, as we call it, because it was originally delivered to the island of Corfu in Greece back in the uh, 1970s. And uh, well, this engine is now 100% original and uh, all done and uh, ready for the, uh, the next phase of this project, will, which will be to put it back to its frame, of course, and to build up the entire bike. So a big milestone in this project and also uh, a big milestone for, uh, for, this, for this bike. So that's um, the next job. Uh, for now, this uh, phase is done. Uh, we'd, we'd like to put your attention to this book, which is written by uh, famous author Ian Falloon. Uh, and this is a book that is just about the 750 Supersport of 1974, uh, with a registry in there as well, where you can find the, uh, the different uh, models and the uh, different engine numbers, frame numbers, and what is known of them. Uh, so there's a registry of the, uh, all the known 750 Supersports in the world and where they are uh, in which, which collection, and etc. So there's a lot of uh, specific information in this book, uh, very nicely put together by uh, Mr. Ian Falloon, uh, who has a ton of knowledge on these, uh, on these bikes. So if you want to know more about these, uh, these 750 Supersports, especially the 1974 green frame, uh, the most famous of all Duc classic Ducatis, be sure to check this out. Uh, it is available in our online store. We'll put up a link where you can uh, see, uh, get more information about this book. So that's definitely something to check out. Uh, that wraps up this video here at Back to Classics, part two of the uh, engine, sorry, the complete restoration of the, uh, the 750 Corfu bike. We thank you very much for watching. Toodledoki, see you next time.